Should we start with the transfer window? First of all, it was a, a frustrating one for you, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. We tried to get. Well, we were trying to get one or two in, but we just couldn't do it for reasons that are now <laughs> very well documented. So, ah, that's just the way it goes. We've still got the loan market next Monday, we can open it. But was, there was one or two I was interested in buying, but we just, just wouldn't be able to do it. Mm. Gee, this probably isn't one for you actually, but I'll, I'll ask. I don't know whether you know whether the money's been paid now, um, the money that was owed to you that, that obviously hindered you not being there on time. I've no idea. I've no idea. I, I know when it was meant to be paid and it wasn't, so I've no idea if, if the club have received the, the, the funds or not. Mm. How frustrating was that for you as a manager though? Because um, you do all your, your work in trying to recruit players, you, you identify your targets, and then through no fault of your, your own as a club, you, you can't go through with those targets. That must be quite annoying, really. It's been really frustrating, and that, what, that's one part of it. The other part was obviously we'd signed a centre half from, from a team that had trained with us before the uh, Notts County game, and then they brought him back, and now they're saying they won't uh, loan him out again. They, they want to, you know, they'll sell him, but maybe not loan him out. So that, that's frustrating. So it's, it has been a frustrating couple of weeks because I, I do feel we had to, we have to add to our squad. I've said that quite a few times now. Um, We've got managed to get Tyrone out, which was another important factor in terms of we needed to release them wages and, and, and the fee with it as well. And that wasn't done till nine o'clock in deadline. So a lot of things have gone against us. But listen, as a manager, I never offer any excuses. We just got on with it. Some things are out of my hands. This, the case of not receiving the money clearly was. Um, and we just hope that we get the money sooner rather than later. The blow, I suppose, is softened in a way because you've got two wins on the bounce and you've got a, a settled side for the first time in, in a long time. First time this season, probably. Yeah, uh, it's the first time I've picked the same 18 players and uh, we're, we're in February now, so it's very strange. But no, the, the, the consistency in the results, performances and, and the selection is, is key to, to us turning this around and, and managing to get in the playoffs. And uh, for the first time, as we've said, a long, long time. I managed to do it last week, and will be able to do it again this week. Yeah. But you'd like two in, would you, in the in the loan window? All being well, if you can get the get the right targets. Yes, I would like two in, um, and then possibly if I get the two in in the positions I want, I'd probably let maybe one of the younger players to go out on loan just to, to balance the books a little bit in terms of numbers. I think I've, I always feel, and I've always maintained that we're better with a smaller number in the squad. It makes things a lot easier. Uh, I think it brings a, a different kind of togetherness. The, the number has been down this week and the last week. Um, uh, we've just obviously tied on going. Mendes, we're trying to still find a club. We'll see what happens on loan with that. But um, I've been pleased with the way they've trained and I think it's helped with a smaller number. Long journey up to Fleetwood this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, quite a remarkable club, really. Six promotions in, in ten seasons and now holding their own in, in League One. They've had a fantastic few years. They have had a great story. And, Small club, continued building, got the promotions all the way through the leagues, more than holding their own as I thought they would this season. They've got a good structure to the football club, a good manager, you know, and Graham, and, and they've got a good squad. You know, when you've got people like David Ball on the bench, Doby on the bench, Schumacher on the bench, nah, they're no mugs, this lot. And I know they may seem like a small team, but they've got some good experience on that bench as well. Yeah, and you only have to appear at the league table to know they're, they're just behind you and have designs of the playoffs as well. So for that reason, it's a, it's a big game too. It is, you know, and uh, them losing at the weekend meant on goal difference we go above them. That doesn't really matter. It's, a, it's always going to be a, a, a close game, I think, and tight. Whoever wins will go three points ahead of the other. So I think there's that motivation in itself. But no, it's, it'll be a hard game. We've watched the last couple of the games. They, were, they should have been three up against Bristol after half an hour. Played really well in the opening period. They've drawn two, always Swindon. Um, this is going to be a really tough game, I think, against a, a good team. Mm. They don't score too many. They don't concede many as well. I think only the, the top three have conceded fewer than them in, in League One this season. So obviously a, a well-organised outfit too. Yeah, they are. They all know what they're doing. Um, they play with a diamond formation, or have been. Um, and they all know the roles with, within that, both on and off the ball. Um, so we've got to find a way of breaking that down, uh, which we've obviously worked on all week. And today, in particular, the session that, that, that we did was was a very good one, and, and the players understood it really well and, and did it really well, actually. I imagine you're actually quite looking forward to going away from home. I know it's a long journey, but you might have a, a surface that you can you can play a bit of football. <laughs> well, the one thing about the, the pitch at Fleetwood is good. It's good, and and that is away games notoriously are harder um, for obvious reasons. But when I look at some of the away games we've got left, Fleetwood being one, Bristol, Preston, Milton Keynes. 
all really good pitches and I think obviously the way we want to play will help us considering how, how our pitch is at the moment. Mm. It's, a, it's a busy couple of months coming up actually now isn't it between now and the end of the campaign obviously you've got Gillingham coming up, Bristol City on a, a Tuesday, a busy March as well. How important is it to be going into that stretch now on the back of a, a couple of wins? Yeah I think it's, it's really important to get some momentum at the moment. This is, I always feel March is a, the real pivotal month but February is a key month as well because we've got to try if we can to continue to get the confidence back into the players which is gradually getting there obviously with the results continue to try and make sure we get the right results and, and hopefully take that confidence into a, a really busy period you know we've got Saturday then, then Gillingham then Rochdale then Bristol then Milton Keynes so we've got some tough games coming up very quickly soon after each other and that's it's always important and if you can go into to a quick run of games with momentum, it means that you're always looking forward. So if you win again on Saturday, that's three in the bounce. You want Tuesday to come quickly, things like that. So it can be a good time to gather momentum, it really can. Mm. On a heavy pitch, I suppose it can be the, the thing that you pick up injury, but uh, are you okay <coughs> from the, the ones that we know about? I know John Taylor's still, I think, a week away, and, and we know all about Jack Baldwin and, uh, and Anik as well, but other than that, you okay? Yeah, John and, and Ben will both be back for the Rochdale game. Um, We'll get a full week's training into them. In fact, John will probably train Sunday with the group. He's knocking on my door saying he'll be fit for Tuesday, but I, I'm not <laughs> going to take that risk with him. So uh, I don't mind that, but I've got to be sensible, as he does. So if we get a full week of training into them, they'll both be ready for the Rochdale game on the 14th. Uh, Vass has picked up a little bit of a knock on his ankle on Tuesday. We're hopeful that he's going to be all right for Saturday. We're pretty certain he will be, but you never know with these injuries. We'll know more tomorrow. Yeah, and if he were to miss out, that would be a blow, actually, because mm. him and Connor have sort of renewed their partnership and Vassell looks like he's just building back to, to where he was earlier in the campaign. Yeah, it would be, um, because, again, it means I'm changing the team. But uh, we'll see how he goes. And, you know, he's, a, he's strong mentally, that boy, and he's desperate to play, so we'll just see how he is. You've got McLean, obviously, and James waiting in the wings. I suppose McLean's probably another one knocking on your door saying, oh, I want to be playing some more as well. Yeah, they all are, you know, and, and they should be. That's what I want off them. And obviously, we've got Aaron until the end of the season. Luke James is, it just needs a goal, the boy. You know, he's, he trains fantastically well, and I think he's done well in games. Slightly unlucky to be left out. But um, I think it's important for whatever strikers are play if they can go on a run, and I've said this too many times now. Uh, they need to go on a run of, of, of games and goals and you know what that brings to strikers, all the confidence and all the rest of it. You mentioned Anik there, um, when he's, he's fit, is there a bit of a dilemma about whether you can get Loach for, for longer or anything? Because I know you've been impressed with him, he hasn't really put a, a foot wrong so far, he made some excellent saves as well. Yeah, touch wood, Loach has been brilliant, uh, I think we're lucky to get him in on loan. I think the boy just needed a bit of confidence, a bit of an arm around him. He's, as I said to him when he came in the building, he's got all the ability, we know that. It's just whatever reason it's not worked out the last year or two but he's been excellent and done all I could have asked for him but when Ben's back I think it's very doubtful that we can manage to cope with both them wages so he'll probably unfortunately have to go back. Mm. So it'll be Dion Henry back on the on the bench then? Yeah I would have thought so yeah. Yeah and uh, how, how things can turn around obviously a couple of weeks on you got two wins on the bounce and you've jumped two places without playing I think this week as yeah. well so the sun's starting to shine again. Yeah the secret's just not to play. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's as simple that isn't it? <laughs> now, uh, now listen, we, we're in a far better place, but obviously we, we want to build on this. You, know, you want to make sure that we, you keep building on it. And, and it, it's amazing how quickly it can turn around. You get a few wins and all of a sudden players that felt that there was no way they were ever going to get a win, all of a sudden it's a reverse and they, they, they feel that they can't get beat. It is actually as simple as that. Psych psychologically, that's how the mind works. and. Thankfully, we've managed to get a couple of wins to build the confidence up and hopefully we continue that.